Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's Cloud Team webinar. Uh, the topic of today's webinar is Aspirato, the payment solution for Salesforce, which is always everybody in finance's favorite topic, which is about how to get money back into the business and make it easier for your customers to pay you. So over the next 45 minutes, we're going to take a look over the Aspirato solution. I'm really pleased to say I'm joined by our good friends at Aspirato. Um, we'll have a look at their solution and how it complements the Financial Force offering too. So a quick run through the agenda. In a second, I'll give a quick introduction to uh, the people that are going to be hosting the webinar, both from Cloud Team and Aspirato side. We'll have a quick look at the background of the two companies. Then Nick from Aspirato is going to give us a high-level solutions overview. And then Ralph from Cloud Team will give us a live demo of the solution. And we'll wrap up with a quick look at a customer success story from Aspirato and some Q&A at the end. Uh, usual bits of admin, we are recording today's session. We will share the recording with our registrants and of course you'll be able to find a link to it on both the Cloud Team and Aspirato websites. And if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we will pick them up at the end. So quick, uh, quick intro to the people that are on the call. So from Cloud Team side, you've got myself, Stefan Meadley, I'm a sales manager with Cloud Team Company. I'm joined by my colleague, Ralph Hartendorf, co-founder and principal consultant. He'll be walking us through the live demo of the Aspirato solution. From Aspirato side, I've got Nick Chaff, the CEO and co-founder of Aspirato. Matt Tully, head of sales and partnerships. And Pierre Nuama, head of channel and alliances. And Pierre, I really wish I'd checked how we are I'm going to show you surname before we come to this webinar, so I hope that was okay for you. So a quick bit of background on Cloud Team Company. We were established in 2014, primarily as an implementer of Financial Force Solutions, supporting the Benelux market. As of today, we're about 35 people in two different offices, the main office in Breda, the Netherlands, and the UK office in Harrogate, which fortunately for me is a stone throw away from Financial Force's EMEA headquarters. As of today, we've supported Financial Force with around about 150 projects. And we're pleased to say we have about 85 customers uh, all in different parts of the, of the globe. We were the first EMEA-based partner to sign up as an official reseller of Financial Force products. And as you can see, as of today, we are recognized as the number one EMEA partner for Financial Force. Uh, and a cool little fact about Cloud Team is out of a team of 35 people, we represent 10 different nationalities, which is something that we're quite proud of. Um, and on the next slide, I'm going to hand you over to the guys from Aspirato who are going to give you a little bit of background about their company. Oh, thank you, Stefan. Um, well, getting paid um, can be difficult and frustrating, and we all know that. Uh, and what's the point of the lead to cash uh, process if you cannot collect payment at the end or during the process? So collecting payment is essentially what we do because we know that revenue is not revenue until it's paid. So we put Salesforce in control of the payment collection process and that allow customers to transform the way they get paid. So Aspirato has a long history in this space and we've been delivering our solution for more than 10 years. Uh, we come with a lot of credibility, experience and, and reach. And as a um, um, Salesforce ISV partner, we offer the most advanced payment collection application on the Salesforce platform. So today we have processed over vast amount of, of payment. We are uh, PCI level one compliant and we are in great position to help company get paid. Together with, um, with Financial Force, we enable organization to collect one off and or recurring payment from all over the world, regardless of the processor, currency, or method of payment methods. Um, more than, uh, we're very proud that more than 300 merchants across multiple vertical trust us because we put Salesforce and therefore financial force platform um, in control of the, the, the payment um, collection process. But they also trust us because um, we bring an open network of payment processors that customers want to use. And that range from credit, debit card, um, local debit card scheme like SEPA, BAX, BEX, ADN, Stripe, uh, etc., to name a few. 
And this uh, ready app that you, you will see today has been built and is maintained by Financial Force. And it brings a, a lot of um, benefit to many areas of business. If we take operation, uh, we have customer experience, cross-department efficiency, and automation, overall cost control. Uh, when it comes to um, the technical team, uh, we know that reducing complexity, increasing security, and platform compatibility matter. And then finally, if we look at finance, we can see things like uh, single source of truth, DSO, cash flow improvement, or compliant risk management. Um, we believe um, that in order to thrive in today's digital global market space, you need Aspirato. And this Ready App for Financial Force is the de facto choice to help you get paid on time. Um, now, let us explain what payment collection with Financial Force means. Nick? Thank you, Pierre. Um, yeah, th so I think, um, you know, really we want to sort of demonstrate to you guys that, um, you know, payment collection with Financial Force with Salesforce is about covering everything across your sort of lead to cash journey. So whether you're saving payments uh, in advance for future billing, whether you're taking card payments, whether you're taking direct debit payments, uh, paying out buttons and invoices, all of these kind of things, you want to enable that on the Financial Force platform. So what I'm going to do is just take a look at uh, an overview uh, of the platform and, and what Aspirato Financial Force and Salesforce, how we work together. So if we can just grab the next, next slide. You know, give that one a click. So, so Salesforce, as we all understand, uh, this is the this is where you get your full platform benefits. This is where you want to control all of your automation and your customer journey. And what we're going to do then is we're then going to, with our uh, application, the Aspirato application, you're going to install that into your org. And what that does is that brings all of your uh, platform and customer centric payment collections onto the platform. So everything you want to do to enable a payment collection from the platform, whether that's tokenizing a card, setting up a direct debit mandate, you'll be able to do that with the Aspirato application. The next step is you're adding Financial Force, uh, and that is bringing you everything that you know and love around uh, customer-centric ERP, uh, account management, uh, financial accounts management, et cetera. Um, and what we have with the Ready app, um, if you want to click there, is essentially an application that's built um, tested and maintained by Financial Force that brings uh, Aspirato and Financial Force together. So it, it ensures that there's a kind of no code approach to ensuring that Financial Force is fully equipped with all the payment collection functionality that Aspirato brings to the platform. And I think that's just important to, to stress because this is an application built and owned by Financial Force and it brings all of our functionality directly into that core those core financial force solutions. So if we go on to the next slide, please, Stefan. Um, essentially, um, you know, what are we looking at here? We're looking at um, uh, an integration that you can use. Uh, we're looking at an integration that means that you don't need to go anywhere near the sort of WorldPay or Stripe or Adyen or go cardless APIs. You're essentially getting all of that compatibility with that package. So you're getting a code-free solution. You're getting a solution that is secure, it's compliant in terms of scheme rules, it's um, compliant in terms of PCI, um, and it's been tested thoroughly by both uh, Aspirato, uh, Financial Force, and Salesforce through Security View. Um, and we offer, therefore, um, that really high level of security that you need. Um, we're also aligned to future releases. Um, so prior to the Aspirato Financial Force Ready App solution, uh, businesses were essentially building um, uh, uh, either one-off integrations or integrations to deal with certain parts of a payment collection journey. And what we're doing here is making sure that at all times, every time Financial Force makes a release, every time Aspirato makes a release, these two solutions are compatible without additional work. Um, and the great thing about this is it means that um, uh, it can be configured and made relevant to your own business journeys, regardless of what type of industry you're in, um, by um, Cloud Team. So because it is a declarative approach to um, 
uh, configuration and because there's clear sets of documentation and instruction around how the two work together you can rely on your uh, implementation partner to 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 really make it work for for you guys um, and that's really what's making it be become the fast uh, you know the recommended solution for for the platform so in terms of um, what you actually get um, the purpose of this webinar really is to give you a little bit of an insight into what comes out of the box you know how do these things actually work and how do you start realizing the benefits of you know quicker cash collection reduced errors fewer manual processes well it all comes down to enabling some of the core functions and features within the financial force solution so for example um, it's really easy for you guys to instantly connect your preferred payment provider and, and as you saw on a slide earlier from pierre you know your payment providers might be go carless it might be world pay stripe bottom line brain tree really doesn't matter what you need to be able to do is in financial force you need to be able to connect those payment providers to salesforce um, without needing to go near any code and that's what you can do and then within financial force you need to be able to configure those processes against your bank accounts and your companies so whether you're a, a single company using financial force or multiple um, you want to be able to control where your money goes which bank accounts they the money actually deposit into and also which you're actually reconciling to within with inside financial force and all of that comes as documented process um, you'll be able to save payment methods against accounts so this is an absolute critical step in making your payment collection more efficient so the ability to say to your customer hey can we capture a payment method from you can we use it for future billing um, this is super important and you'll be able to do that direct from your own customer accounts store it there securely and even have multiple payment methods so they might be able to provide you with card details for payment they might be able to provide you with um, uh, ATH details in, in, in the US the next one is around the ability to just turn on or off auto cash collection and auto cash matching so when your invoices are posted you get the choice of whether you want to just go ahead and collect on a specified date and when a collection is successful you want to be able to match that against your invoices so that you can match the payment to the invoice and then kick off a process that is that successful uh, payment payment process and within the package that has been built um, you have the ability to control whether you do that all the time or some of the time depending on what products or what services you're you're selling it really important part of what we we offer um, the next thing is around pay now buttons on invoices uh, often the sort of the headline uh, benefit of something like this but it really is just it's a small part of a successful payment collection um, service but yes customers want to be able to pay easily and quickly when you distribute your invoices uh, and we enable you to put those pay now buttons on um, uh, really easily you want to be able to take payments over the phone if your customer is uh not it is not able to use the e-commerce process or via links that you can send out in emails or texts or chatbots etc all of that functionality built into the, the solution um, we also enable self-serve billing via communities so as many of you know financial force uh, have a community solution to allow customers to see outstanding invoices bills um, and what we've enabled you to do is to add those pay now buttons and ability to capture payment methods direct from those communities again without any real heavy lifting from from your side uh, and of course uh, within the, the card payment environment we're giving you that PCI DSS level one so that highest level of um, security that you can have around card payments so we cover everything from uh, the payment what we call the checkout screen so the screens that are actually capturing all those card details already come out of the box functional within within the within the solution those are some of the things that come straight out you'll be able to see that from documentation you'll see it from financial force demos um, and i think really um, cloud team just wanted to kind of walk you through some of these bits and pieces and hopefully also give you a bit of a view on um, you know what they make of um, this sort of integration based on you know what exists now what's been there in the past and really just show you how some of those features work so i'm going to hand you hand you back to 
uh, cloud team. We're, you know, we, we, we're the product builder. Uh, we're not the implementation consultants. We're not the ones with, with that deep insight of how customers want to use Finance Force. That is cloud team. So kind of uh, let them take that away and, and, and walk you through some of those, some of those features. Thank you, Nick. So it's up to me now to uh, actually show what, uh, what has been presented before. So if I can share my screen, then I will be able to uh, give you the details of the, uh, let's say the, the integration has been uh, already, uh, yeah, all the features have been discussed. And I think uh, by, uh, yeah, the, the way it's been already completely embedded into financial force, uh, it shows really the way it could ideally work together and, and smoothen the whole payment process. So I started with this, uh, the screen and uh, uh, as it comes together with the installation, there's a kind of an Aspirato One app already created in order to uh, group together some of the uh, topics that we would like to demo. Um, for setting up the system, it's quite easy actually. There's a kind of an Aspirato setup button uh, that will activate actually the configuration based on the uh, custom settings that we have to set up. And you can see that actually, if it's green, of course, you see that it's, uh, it's been completely active, uh, it will work. Uh, and then you can show the connections that are already set up for this demo org. So you see that Stripe and GoCardless have been uh, identified for different currencies in order to um, connect them uh, the, with the correct PSP connection. Um, just a little bit of uh, behind the scene, the custom settings, you will be able to, uh, to create some optional uh, things like, uh, for example, do you want to create automatically the cash processing? Um, do you want to create cash entries at the same time? Do you prevent partial payments? Uh, there's a kind of an image that you can configure, which is actually this uh, pay now button, which we will show later. Um, and uh, there's a kind of a notification to, uh, to the user whenever you start a batch, which process actually all the, the, um, the payments itself. But that's more behind the scene. What we normally want to do is actually how we will set up the system. So in setting up, as Nick already mentioned, you will be able on the bank account then to identify a bank account and link it to a, a, an uh, Aspirato customer ID. Uh, but it's, it's an optional thing that you can leave blank. So there's this additional field on the bank account and it's also on the company level. So that's basically about the setup. But then start working with the system. Well, let's uh, use one of the accounts that I've used for this, uh, this demo and um, try to find a very uh, innovative name, Cloud and Partners. And just seeing this, uh, this uh, screen that uh, probably everyone is using for Salesforce, showing all the details of all transactions uh, that are linked to, the, um, to this user. There are now a couple more coming with uh, Aspirato, which is actually the authorizations and the payment integration methods. Now, these are not required fields. They are only required if you want to automatically collect data as soon as you post a sales invoice. So if you leave them blank, you can still, let's say, create payment links or the display now button or use the community. But if you really want to collect automatically uh, the, the amount of money uh, for the sales invoices by the authorizations they gave via credit card or direct debit, then you actually start to create an authorization uh, on, the, uh, on this account. So you, by just clicking or authorization, you will be able to uh, select the methods that you uh, want to, uh, that you are discussing with your uh, customer. So for example, the direct debit and a card. Uh, you put in some information about the, uh, the customer Cloud and partners. And this is a customer and place it on a very nice place um, in Amsterdam. Very Dutch uh, family name. Um, just need to complete the screen. And we'll put an email address for confirmation. Okay. So once this is created, and of course the currency will use euro for this one, we save this authorization. And actually this authorization then uh, is awaiting submission. So it means that um, the 
the um, your contact person can now actually select and fill in details by um, by just this link that can be sent to the uh, to the contact person. And once this link has been sent, then actually the authorization can be come in force. So this is just a waiting submission. It can be pending status whenever you send it, but uh, I can directly process it from, um, from this screen. And what happened, it will open a kind of a page that will also be in the, in the URL that has been selected, where you can now enter your card details. So oh, this is just a demo card, it's not mine. Uh, this information can then be, let's say, completed on the, uh, by, the, by the contact person themselves. And either you can check or the direct debit information can be used. So, so this is actually what, uh, what can still be used uh, because I selected actually two uh, payment methods. But uh, for in this case, we uh, selected the credit card. Press the update uh, calculation uh, update of the authorization. As you can see, there will be a kind of a report back to the user that the authorization has been successfully finished. I can close the screen and I'll wait for the screen to be refreshed. As you can see, the, uh, uh, the authorization is now uh, in place. So it means that actually now sales invoices can be directly becoming uh, um, uh, paid by just using the, um, the payment link that we have created. You see all the details that is uh, part of this uh, setup. And um, just going to the um, account back to the account. On the account itself, uh, as mentioned by Nick, there's also the payment integration method. So if there are multiple payments uh, being created, you can actually make a default payment integration now. So you can select them from the authorizations being set up for this account. So this was authorization three, um, the support a provider. And here you can actually also link it directly to a bank account on which you want to receive uh, the amount of money. And you can also leave it blank and it will, will pick the, the default bank account that is set on the company profile. Yeah, so back to the customer. Um, I already prepared one sales invoice uh, on this account. So this sales invoice, it is a, it is a, uh, at the moment in the status in progress. As you can see, it's not posted. It's in progress. There are no things yet about payments or um, payment uh, methods. <clears throat> I just can post now the sales invoice. System will go away and check if there is an authorization that is active, if there's a, a payment uh, integration method that has been uh, used on this uh, account. As we're waiting for the system to actually then complete the posting progress, a transaction of course will be created. But now also at the same time, the payment is created. As you can see this payment for this invoice um, is now shown that there's actually an, a payment method linked to an um, aspirata reference so you can see for the amount on the, a certain due date and and now this payment uh, the payment route is selected every detail is being taken from the authorization um, i can actually start adding it normally what would happen is that a batch process would uh, kick off actually to actually send out all these um, payment uh, requests uh, via aspirato and actually then uh, collect the money from uh, the customer. Uh, as you can see, the payment stage is now awaiting submission. Well, because it was a demo um, credit card, uh, it will never happen. So I just now force that actually the, the information back from a Soprato will come that it's collected from the customer. And I will save the, uh, the payment stage. So this actually then triggers the second part. It's actually, um, will inform the system that the payment has now been officially being uh, uh, took place. And if I'm going back to the sales invoice or directly to the matched payments, you would see actually that on the, on the back of this, uh, changing this payment setting, um, just to refresh the page. There will now also be a cash entry be created. So that's actually what Nick also mentioned and shown on the uh, on the config settings. 
is that you can now directly create cash matching. Um, so the, the invoice itself has been uh, identified as paid. And um, actually the whole process has now been completed just by, uh, by this link that has been sent out to the, uh, uh, to the contact person. As you can see, there's no payment link because that was not applicable for this, uh, this invoice or this account as it was actually already it configured a kind of uh, a credit card payment. So if we now doing the other method, so just looking at an, an, a solution where there's no authorization method being created, and I'm using this uh, very um, well-known primate tech um, customer, which is used in a lot of demos. Well, this um, primate tech doesn't have an authorization setup, uh, so there's no automatic way of collecting the money. So if I'm going to another sales invoice for this type of customer, and it's on a, uh, the sales invoice, which is also not posted yet, then you would be able to see there that actually once I'm adding, uh, hitting the, the post button, that actually not a payment will be created, but actually the payment link um, and the pay now button will appear. So just waiting for Financial Force to refresh the screen. As you can see now, there's this payment link and there's this pay now button, with both of course will start at the same page uh, on the screen. So this payment link can be sent out via an email. Uh, when you will email, for example, the PDF, you can uh, incorporate the payment link in the email or even in the Conga uh, invoice template. Um, but if you want to take uh, payments by phone, as, uh, as Nick mentioned, you can also, as a back office uh, account, that you can use the pay now link. And that actually will open the same uh, screen where the customer will be able to fill in their data or do it by phone. And then you can actually check if you want to pay by card and uh, complete all the details and, uh, and go to the end step. So that's actually it's similar, but then for each invoice, it needs to be done individually. Well, of course, it's easier to have everything as an authorization and use it actually for automatic collection. So that are the two methods that are uh, being able for the, for the, um, uh, being used by the internal people, but also uh, the community is a very um, interesting point to also include now this payment link and this pay now button. So instead of sending it via the, the link, or you can still send it via the link, um, you can also, uh, the customer can also use the community. And for that, uh, unfortunately, the community was not active on this screen. So I need to uh, stop sharing and show actually uh, the PDF again in order the screenshots that I made to show the next step. So Stefan, um, yeah, the next uh, slide, please. So this is actually a screenshot uh, of the of a financial force community where an, uh, a customer contact person can actually select the account details or the sales invoices or anything that you actually uh, um, present to the, to the customer from the financial force details. And if you go to the next slide, there will be sales invoices on this account. And as you see, it will open an, a list view of sales invoices. And in this case, there are all unpaid uh, sales invoices based on filters that you will set. Now, there is the kind of a drop down button uh, on, the, on the right side next to the unpaid status. So if you click on that um, uh, unpaid status, uh, or sorry, on the drop down button, the next slide will actually show you which type of screen will uh, uh, pop up. So it will actually show the details of that invoice um, based on the information that has been uh, presented on the community. And also the make a payment will show now this pay now um, image. So this is actually what has been defined on the custom settings in Financial Force. And just by pressing the pay now link pops up directly the same page. If you press the screen, Stefan, it shows actually the same type of Aspirato page where um, your, your contact person can complete it with uh, information from uh, direct debit, uh, credit cards, whatever has been uh, created as a uh, payment solution in order to pay directly from the community uh, this invoice. So yeah, all those three methods have been really easy configured uh, on Financial Force and maintained. So although it's a part of the cloud team uh, configuration, um, we really don't see that it's a hell of a job. So I think um, 
back to uh, to you, Pierre, uh, for the, the last parts of the slide. Uh, it's not me, it's my colleague, uh, Matt, who's going, uh, first of all, it's going to be uh, Nick and then Matt, who are going to take care of that. No problem. Um, th thank you so much for that. That was, that was really good just to see that inside uh, Financial Force, you know, with the kind of the, the standard features, features exposed. And I think, you know, the, the real important thing here is to understand, you know, what's the impact of, of putting these two, two solutions together? Um, and, you know, ultimately this is about uh, a customer experience, you know, how easy it is for your customers to pay you, to pay you promptly, to pay you without error. Um, that's what's really key here. Um, and, you know, that customer experience comes from lots of different things. It comes from the payment methods that you offer them. So how do they prefer to pay? Do they prefer to pay by card? Do they prefer to buy, pay by direct debit? Do they want to pay in a certain currency? Do they want to pay, you know, even in certain languages? Um, but it's also about, um, you know, the, the actual um, success rate and the comms that come out of that. And by putting it within uh, the Salesforce platform, you're going to really be able to control that end-to-end -end journey. Um, we've talked about the compliance and security and then everything that you saw just then, you know, that nobody's had to go near any code. So there is, there's no kind of exposure there. And in all details, when we're capturing um, card numbers or account numbers, um, everything is tokenized. So, so we're not allowing any of our shared customers to store sensitive data within within the financial force Salesforce solution. Um, you've clearly got a single view of data. A single view of data means you don't have to log into separate systems. It means you don't have to go and look at the WorldPay dashboard or the Stripe dashboard. You can just sit in Financial Force and really see, you know, who's paid, what they paid, how they paid, whether it was Visa, MasterCard, direct debit, et cetera, what failed, what didn't fail. And you can act on that, on that data. And that means that you can improve your business processes. So if you have a cumbersome arrears process, you can manage that. If you have a, a process that, you know, uh, offers different payment methods based on how much the goods are that you're selling, you can automate that. So it really giving you a lot of control over, you, over those processes. Um, it's known to reduce errors. Uh, it's tried and tested that everyone is using the shared shared technology. So you don't have that, that risk around uh, custom, custom built solutions. Um, and you're able to reduce your costs and, um, you know, reducing cost is a, it's a big statement. It's one lots of people people make, but you know, cost within payment um, collection is is seen in lots of different areas. It's seen in the in the raw processing costs of the gateways, the payment process that you choose, uh, and we give you flexibility on that. It comes up in terms of the cost it is to to create and implement some kind of payment integration into Salesforce, and that cost. Um, is both the initial and also the maintainable cost. And there's also the cost of uh, inefficient processes and, and manual processes that are often seen when you get this kind of disjointed um, uh, sort of flow between different departments within a, within a business. So you know, we're really looking to make sure we can demonstrate and help you reduce those costs and across those different areas. You know, ultimately this is about getting uh, a better cash flow, you know, and, and that cash flow cycle, as, as we pointed out, you know, really should start right at the point when you're closing, closing contracts. So if you're getting a contract signature through Conga, then, you know, why not also get a, a, a payment method saved against your, against your account so that you can actually start invoicing uh, and collecting money, money better. So we really urge people to think about that entire cash flow cycle and make sure that you can, you can use, uh, payment collection across across that journey and, and that's what this should allow you to do um, the best person to talk to you about success stories is, is our sales guy Matt um, Matt really I just want um, to if you can to let let the team know sort of you know where we're up to uh, we've got 12 months uh, since financial force built this integration into into Asperato to solve lots of these challenges um, so it'd be good just to talk about you know, one particular case study, there are lots more, but also just give a view of, you know, the types of businesses you're talking to and the, and the sort of rate of which we're seeing people adopt this solution. Thanks, Nick. Hi, guys. Um, we're obviously super excited about the partnership that we've got with Financial Force. Um, 
Since we signed the agreement back in July last year, we've secured about 27 new projects. The businesses um, are completely different to one another. They range from um, subscription-based to traditional invoicing. But in all cases, the, the major driver or the compelling reason that Aspirato is being introduced is to actually speed up the accounts receivable process. And this, this is um, really important in the current climate when organizations are, are possibly struggling to pay their, their invoices on time, you can give them the option of adding a, a pay now button to the invoice and allowing customers to pay you in a way that's gonna suit them. In terms of um, a simple um, use case and a, a example, um, here in the UK, we have a, a, an organization called Crunch Accounting. Um, ironically, they are a online accounting software business um, and they use Financial Force yeah, as their, their back office. Um, one of the things that they, they wanted to do was actually streamline how they collected payment. They were doing traditional um, direct debit processing, which was tiresome, full of errors um, and, and very time consuming. So they introduced Aspirato um, and it resulted in immediate business benefits. Financial Force is in control of the entire payment collection journey. They can now add pay now buttons onto their invoices. They can automatically collect either via direct debit or recurring card payment. Um, and they also got the automatic cash entry and cash matching, um, which is something that Financial Force have built. So when speaking to them um, and asking about where do they, uh, where have they seen uh, major benefits, um, they mention every area of their, their organization from cash collection to accounts receivable, um, being able to speak to the customer because all of the data is in the single source um, and financial force controls that, that complete journey. So Crunch is just one of many. Um, in terms of um, the work that we're doing across the globe, um, we can collect multi-currency and multi-territory. So we're enabling organizations to enter into new territories as well. Um, and being able to collect in multiple currencies should they need to. Thank you, Matt. That's really, really, really helpful. Um, so uh, I think just conscious on, on the time uh, that everyone has here and leaving some time for some questions. Um, so I'll probably hand back to, to Stefan for uh, opening up to, to questions and we can see what we can see what we can do to answer any that, that have come up. Um, Fantastic. Thanks, Nick. Um, and thanks, Ralph, Matt, and Pierre, uh, as well, for the presentation. We do have a few questions that have come through, so I'll, I'll throw them out to the, to the team and whoever wants to jump in and, and can pick them up. So the first one that came through um, was somebody asked uh, on the authorizations, is there a limit of authorizations that one single account can have? I'm happy to pick that one up. It's Nick from Aspirato. Uh, the answer to that is no. So you know, you might find that you've got uh, against any one of your accounts, you might have a number of authorizations in place, which is why you can you can configure defaults against this, or you can have multiple. So um, you might find that if you've got somebody with, you know, lots of different company credit cards, individuals, you could be listing lots of different authorizations against that account too. No, no, no limit on that. Fantastic. Uh, next question is, um, is asking about customer refunds. How does the system handle customer refunds? Uh, I'm happy to yeah, let, me, let me jump in there. <laughs> yeah, go on, Matt. Yeah. So within Aspirato, you can actually um, issue a refund. There is a, an, an object that you can actually use to issue a refund back to, um, let's say it's a card, um, back to that card. You don't have to take the card details again. Um, in terms of um, updating financial force, at the moment, that is a manual process that you would need to do um, to actually update the refund back into financial force. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Matt. Um, the last question that came through the chat function was asking about partial payments and installments. If somebody wants to jump in on that one. Yep, so uh, within the documentation, there's actually guidance around whether you want to or not allow partial payment on invoice. So it's something you can restrict if you want to. Um, and if you if you choose to restrict that, then it'll lock those payments against the full amount of the of the invoices. If you choose not to, then yes, it will allow your customer to make partial payments and it will just match those partial payments against the invoices and leave that balance as, a, as an opening balance. 
Fantastic, thanks Nick. That's all the questions that came through the chat function. We've got about three or four minutes left, so I'll quickly just open it up to the floor. If there's anybody on the call that wants to unmute themselves and, and ask a question, then please feel free to, to jump in now. As always, silence is golden. I think that means that uh, you've all done a stellar job of, of walking through the solution um, and just how powerful it is. So um, I'd like to, to personally thank uh, uh, Matt and uh, Nick and Pierre and Ralph for their time in presenting today's webinar. Um, and thank you to everybody that's joined. Um, look out for the recording. Um, and yeah, have a great afternoon. And we look forward to, to seeing everybody on our next webinar as well. Thank you much, very much, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you.